The name of the disorder, transverse myelitis, can be broken down. Transverse means extending completely across something. In this case, it refers to going across the spinal cord. And myelitis means inflammation of myelin, which is a fatty substance surrounding nerves. So in transverse myelitis, there's inflammation that damages the myelin as well as the rest of the neuron across a section of the spinal cord. Now, neurons are the main cells of the nervous system. They're composed of a cell body, which contains all of the cell's organelles, and nerve fibers, which are projections that extend out from the neuron cell body. Nerve fibers are either dendrites that receive signals from other neurons, or axons that send signals along to other neurons. Where two neurons come together is called a synapse, and that's where one end of an axon sends neurotransmitters to the dendrites or directly to the cell body of the next neuron in the series. The axons are intermittently wrapped in a fatty substance called myelin. Myelin is extremely important to neurons because it helps to allow an action potential propagate much faster, and action potentials are electrical signals that race down the axon and trigger the release of neurotransmitters or a chemical signal on the other end. Without myelin, this signal propagation is very slow and inefficient. Since some of these neurons can be very long, especially ones that go from the spinal cord to the toes, the fact that myelin helps speed up action potentials is actually super important. Now, the spinal cord is composed of both gray and white matter. Gray matter consists of cell bodies. It's in the middle of the spinal cord and is shaped kind of like a butterfly. Surrounding the gray matter is white matter which consists of the myelinated axons of various neurons. The neurons in the spinal cord form different neural tracts that carry information to and from the brain. There are three main tracts to remember. The cortical spinal tract is a descending pathway that carries motor information from the brain to different muscles in the body, and it controls voluntary muscle movement. The dorsal column is an ascending pathway that carries sensory information about pressure, vibration, fine touch, and proprioception, or the awareness of one's bodily position in space. Finally, the spinothalamic tract is another ascending pathway and it's divided into two parts. The lateral tract carries sensory information for pain, pressure, and temperature, while the anterior tract carries information for crude touch, or the sense that one has been touched but without being able to localize where they were touched. Autonomic neurons are also located in the spinal cord and these help regulate processes like urination, digestion, and heart rate. These neurons hitch a ride with the various tracts, but their cell bodies are found in the spinal cord. For example, the sympathetic division, or the fight response, has its cell bodies in the thoracic and lumbar regions, and make up the lateral horns of the gray matter. In transverse myelitis, there's inflammation of the spinal cord across an entire spinal cord segment or even multiple segments in some instances. Most commonly, the inflammation happens at the thoracic level, but can also happen in the cervical and lumbar regions as well. The inflammation might be caused by an infection, an autoimmune disease like multiple sclerosis, or it could just be idiopathic, meaning there's no identifiable cause. Some well-known pathogens that trigger inflammation include mycoplasma pneumonia, herpes and dengue viruses, and schistosomiasis, which is a parasitic disease. Ultimately, the inflammation damages the myelin or the neurons themselves in the spinal cord. When this happens, neurons become unable to communicate with each other, and messages going up and down the spine fail to get delivered. Symptoms of transverse myelitis depend on which tracts are damaged, and usually affect sensory, motor, or autonomic function on both sides of the body. There's usually a well-defined sensory level, meaning that the symptoms only affect the body below a certain level of the spinal cord. Damage to the cortical spinal tract causes weakness and problems with voluntary muscle movement below the level of the spinal cord segment. Damage to the spinothalamic tract causes a loss of temperature and pain sensation. And damage to the dorsal column pathways causes problems with balance and spatial orientation. Diagnosis of transverse myelitis can be done with a lumbar puncture, which is when a needle is used to collect cerebrospinal fluid from around the spinal cord. In transverse myelitis, there's usually an increase in white blood cells. In addition, MRI or magnetic resonance imaging can be used to spot areas of inflammation in the spinal cord. Treatment of transverse myelitis depends on the underlying cause. 
If there's an autoimmune process, it might be useful to use steroids or plasmapheresis, which is where antibodies are filtered out of the blood. All right, as a quick recap, transverse myelitis is inflammation across a certain level in the spinal cord. It's a rare disease which can be triggered by an infectious or autoimmune process. The symptoms are related to the affected part of the spinal cord. When the corticospinal tract is affected, a person will have problems with voluntary movement. And when the spinothalamic tract is damaged, a person will have problems sensing pain. Lastly, if the dorsal column pathway is damaged, a person will have a problem with balance and spatial orientation. Hey guys, I hope you enjoyed this video on transverse myelitis. Thanks for taking the time to watch and leave us some comments. I had a great time doing the illustrations for this video. Um, we had Tanner on voiceover duty. Sean wrote the script. Yifan and Rishi edited that script. And finally, it all came together in the capable hands of Evan, who did the video editing. If you guys want to see more content and get access to other great educational tools like, I don't know, study schedules, flashcards, you're going to want to head over to osmosis.org. But what else is on osmosis.org, Sam? I will tell you, YouTube audience. Awesome swag like t-shirts and hats and coffee cups so you can look super cool while studying super efficiently. Boom! Total package. That's all from me, friends. See you next time.